Welcome to another episode of the Boom Breakdown. Uh, I'm going to break down the fights tonight for the UFC fight night in um, Colorado, Denver, Colorado. Great place. I went and visited there after my last fight. It was amazing being up in the mountains and everything. The altitude was different, but it was awesome. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole entire car, but I'm going to kind of pick and select fights. Um, starting with uh, a few of the prelim fights. We'll start with um, Rafael Sunsal versus uh, Aljamain Sterling. Uh, Aljo is an uh, old teammate of mine. We used to train up in Ithaca uh, when we first started, you know, coming up in the ranks. Uh, he was always someone who stood out, you know, um, was a, you know, undefeated fighter for a while and uh, has a really strong attitude, uh, sh good, good mental game to him and um, really tricky guy, you know. I mean, he's uh, he's got some, some really good grappling skills and uh, really good at taking the back and setting up chokes and stuff like that um and it has also like a funky wrestling style where it's like unpredictable stuff that you haven't really felt you know from other people um so hard, hard to prepare for and unpredictable and a lot of movement in the stand-up area as well um uh, hasn't really been in a, a lot of fights where where uh you know he he got into really crazy exchanges on the feet but um uh, he looks to be, you know, in really good spirits and, uh, you know, looks sharp in his videos lately. I think, you know, he's made some some big improvements, some changes to his game. And uh, a Sun Sal coming off a long layoff, that's always playing a factor in, in, in these fights. You know, I mean, you never know how it's going to feel, you know, not fighting for a while. Um, you know, a Sun Sal's a pretty, you know, fairly aggressive guy. You know, I think he's, uh, he's pretty well-rounded. He's got good stand-up, good grappling skills, you know, decent wrestling um i think aljo's got the advantage in the in the wrestling and the jujitsu aspect you know uh even though a sun Tao i think is a black belt i uh, i just think uh uh aljo has um more more tools more tricks in, in his bag to you know to pull out in the fight um and you know he looks for the finish down on the ground especially with, with the ground and pound and the, and the submissions um it's really just about the stand-up in this fight. I feel, you know, I feel that the wrestling might be negated. Um, you know, it might, might end up being a stand-up fight, and, and uh, I could see, I could see it going both ways. You know, I I, I could see a Sunsal being the aggressor with a lot of the exchanges, but I could also see Aljo, you know, outpointing him and outmoving him and outsmarting him on the feet as well, and um, you know. I may be biased with this fight, you know, because uh, Aljo's a, a, a friend and uh, somebody who who uh, I know, you know, so it's uh, and that I've trained with, and uh, but I but I really do see him being able to come out with the win here, and I just see a real positive attitude lately, so uh, I, I'm gonna go with Aljo by uh, split decision. Let's move on to Nate Marquardt and Sam Alvey. Sam smiling, Alvy guy is hilarious, always smiling, crazy. I mean, even at weigh-ins, the guy looks like happier than ever, which is unheard of. But uh, you know, this is uh one of those fights where I think Marquardt, you know, he's a veteran of the game, and he has a lot of well-rounded tools, and uh, uh, he's gonna have the experience edge, I think, uh, with the higher level competition over the years. Um, and, and I see Marquardt as being a little bit too overwhelming for, for Alvi as far as, you know, the explosiveness goes and, and, and the uh, unpredictability of striking to takedowns. You know, uh, Marquardt could really mix it up well. Alvi's more of a standstill and counter you with some, some good right hooks. Um, yeah, he has power in his hands. Alvi does, but uh, I think overall Marquardt's got the more well-rounded skills and I... I don't see him getting caught by that that right hook. I think he's going to be able to avoid that and um, perhaps take down Alvi. Uh, you know, soften him up a little bit, land some strikes to takedowns, get him a little tired, and get a TKO finish. At some point in the later rounds, I'll go second or third round. Let's go TKO for Nate Marquardt. Uh, moving on to the main card, we have Alex Caceres and Knight. I don't know his first name, his last name is Knight. Um, 
with these guys, you got, you know, an up and comer in Knight. Uh, uh, you know, he's he's a newer guy. He, you know, but he has some wins in the UFC so far. He's looked pretty, you know, pretty aggressive, pretty solid fighter. Uh, Caceres is a uh, one of those guys that's uh, you know a true martial artist at heart, and um, he always seems to be evolving and uh, you know willing to take risks and very fearless with his fighting skills. I mean, he's willing to spin and, and and throw some unpredictable stuff and take some wild risks and transitions for looking for submissions and um i think that goes a long way in this game i mean yeah it, it, it's it, it puts you in a, a vulnerable spot to get caught by by things but i think caceres is is a high fight iq um he knows what he's doing in there even though it may look wild um and that's really hard to train for. I, I think uh, I think Knight ha has a tough, durable style, but I can't see him being able to outskill Caceres. And I think Caceres is the, you know, has fought the higher level competition in the UFC. He's been in there with tough guys. Been in there with guys that have finishing ability. But uh, he seems to stay in the fight, you know, and uh, he seems to get better as the fight goes on and more creative and and more loose as things go. So. Uh, I could see Caceres coming away with the the unanimous decision, uh, just being able to outstrike Knight and um, just outwork him and and, and outperform him. You know, uh, throw more things out there, impress the judges. I'm going with Alex Caceres by uh, decision. Moving on to Engano and Arlovsky. Arlovsky's been in this game for so long. He's a pioneer. He's been the world champion before. You know, he still has it in him, but he's getting older. And I think this is just one of the cases of, like, you know, new guy coming in to, to take care of the old guy and 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 bring in the new era. You know, this this guy in Ganyo has so much potential. He looks very, very explosive and also for a big guy, he seems to be pretty agile and and, and throw pretty quick, you know, strikes. Um I really don't see how Arlovsky can can beat this guy. I, I think this guy's better in in I, I don't know. I don't know about his ground game, but I mean, he seems to be pretty quick. I saw him at the open workouts, and he's working on some pretty slick submissions. I haven't seen many heavyweights moving like him, and and that's always impressive to me when a heavyweight can move with uh, with uh, a, a weird kind of explosion. That's a quick twitch that not everybody has. You know, Arlovsky's a smart fighter. He's pretty standstill. You know, he's a he's a you know a basic striker, but he's good. You know, he he has good boxing, good fundamentals mentals good takedown defense and um he has the experience of course but i just think engano is going to be too much man i think this new guy is something special i think he's a future champion and i think he's going to catch arlovsky and we've seen arlovsky hurt in plenty of his fights and i could see him getting stopped in this fight for sure this is a special athlete uh, i'm gonna have to go with engano uh, first or second round ko tko Moving on to Donald Cerrone and Jorge Masvidal. Man, this is the fighters fight right here. This is this is a fight that that the purists want to see. Um I'm always impressed with Cerrone. He's just willing to fight anyone, anytime, anywhere. He's always ready, short notice, whatever. He's always in the gym. He's always getting better. Uh, and it seems like he's turned a mental edge. You know, I think some of the fights he's lost, maybe he lost before he got in there. Wasn't necessarily a worser fighter, but maybe his head wasn't in the same spot as, as it is now. I know he's working with a sports psychologist. And um, he just has that aggression now. He knows when to finish you. You know, he, he kind of knows to how to... Uh, take his time he has a sense of patience in there and um he knows how to find his finish you know as as the fight goes he he starts to sharpen up and um he has a lot of good strikes to kicks uh unpredictability where you don't know if he's going body or head and uh he mixes it up really well he goes high low high and um his jujitsu skills are, are top notch too i mean if he decides to he can do whatever he wants in the fight you know it seems like his wrestling is probably his weakest point but in his latest fights he seems to have a really good improvement in his wrestling i've seen him take a few guys down with some some really quick level changes and um 
On the other hand, Masvidal, he just is a, such a savvy vet in there. I mean, when he's in there, he seems so comfortable. And like he says, he's never afraid to get hit. He's, it, it never discourages him. Like, you know, he'll get caught with a hard shot, but he's still right there. He'll make a face at you, and he'll come back real hard. And that's kind of demoralizing. Like, when you hit someone with a really hard shot, and you think, ooh, I got you. And, and he's just like, nah, I'm good. Like, I mean, Masvidal has that, that mentality, too. I mean, th this is going to be something special, this fight is uh, definitely fight of the night in my opinion and uh, I really really have a hard time picking in this one because I can see it going either way and um, I I just don't see Masvidal getting finished in this fight I feel like he's he's one of those guys that like no matter what it's like so hard to put him away and Donald Cerrone has been put away numerous times in fights you know if you, if you hit him hard to the body sometimes you catch him he caves and, and Masvidal has been one of those guys that is really good at going to the body he has a good solid uh, boxing skills where he goes you know uh, two punch combo to the head and he comes with a looping body hook where he catches guys a lot to the body especially against the cage um i could kind of see that happening in this fight and as hard as it is to pick against cerrone right now with the streak that he's been on ah it's it's tough but i think i gotta go with uh masvidal by either decision or or uh, a second or third round stoppage body shot tko style uh moving on to sh the main event shevenko and pena uh, Pena is one of those savvy, gritty girls that has a really strong mentality, and it seems like she's on a on a uh, an up climb right now. And um, Shevenko is is someone who's a, a high level striker and really mixes it up well. And she's a true martial artist in her own right too. And uh, seems like she has her head on straight too. And I don't know, man. This is a hard one to pick. I could see uh, Pena trying to get this one to the ground and um, show some really heavy ground and pound and dominant position which is where most of her fights end up and she really takes a toll on her opponents with her vicious ground and pound elbows strikes punches um passing guards submission skills i mean she, I, I don't really see her getting the submission unless it's a rear naked choke but um Shavenko seems like uh not not an easy girl to take down she seems like a very athletic well-rounded uh fighter and she beat holly holm uh she outpointed her which is a, a lot to be said because holly holm's a high level striker herself and um <clears throat> This one's a hard one to pick as well, but I think it's that striker versus grappler type of style. I, I don't see Pena being able to do much on the feet as far as striking goes. Um, I mean, she's she, she has a, uh, a different level of... of um, like uh, aggression when it comes to stand up, I think she has like a brawler type mentality, and that could do damage to the higher level striker. Sometimes you see that brawler style come in and, and overwhelm somebody who who who's really known to be a uh, high level on the feet. But um, I don't see that happening because Shevenko has a good sense of cage control and movement and picking her shots, and she's really quick with mixing up strikes to kicks, and um, I think that could be trouble for Pena, but ultimately, I can see Pena getting the fight to the ground at some point, and finishing by that ground and pound that she has uh, by TKO, and I think that might be what happens. I'm going to have to go with uh, Pena in a second round stoppage by ground and pound, and that's my picks. So, uh, keep uh, tuned. I, uh, I have some news coming soon. Um, we're looking for a potential fight in the UFC and uh, coming up in Halifax. I'm, I'm really hoping to get on that card. Um, there's been some rumors, you know, may maybe, maybe Joe Soto. I'm not sure. Uh, that was one of the names I heard. And if not, then um, I'm scheduled to fight for a promotion called ACB, which is a Russian-based promotion, and uh, that would be March 11th in Manchester, England. So stay tuned for my upcoming fights and news, and um, this is the Boom Breakdown. You can follow me on Instagram at BrianBoom135, or you can follow me at on Twitter at BoomBrian135, and uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Boom.